And now, with thanks to Bright Ideas Lighting, Talbot Avenue at Loan. Building or renovating? They work with you to create a bespoke lighting plan for your home. Brightideas.ie Now that all you kids are back in your schools, it's Wednesday morning and DIY rules. So, between now and 11 o'clock, let's meet the young fella that Will loves. To mock. He nails or screws or sticks it. Brian Clunan, Mr. Fix-It. Greetings, sir. How are we? <laughs> you call me young fella. <laughs> you are. I, Relative to planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> How's the form? Good, thanks. Actually, just when I think of it, a few times in the last few weeks, I've had people both on the phone and in the shop asking, does anybody know anyone that repairs old radios? Now, they don't mean, you know... Uh, uh, wireless uh, Wi-Fi they mean uh, you know the old Bush style radio that style of old radio so if anyone knows anyone in the Midlands they might let Midlands 103 know and we'll pass on the messages we'll save it and have it for the future the best way to get in touch is to pick up that phone 0818 300 103 if you're in work send a sneaky text on 083 30 10 103 powered by Land Brothers Toyota in Tullamore first question today what is the best cleaner for five-year-old solid timber floors that over time have become very dull and even a bit grubby looking, even though I wash them every second bloody day? Well, that's part of the problem. Washing so, them? Yeah. So, two things. I would always say just as much as you can, just brush wooden floors unless they absolutely need to be washed. So that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, use a timber floor wash as opposed to an ordinary floor cleaner because the floor cle- the ordinary floor cleaners will definitely remove the shine. Um, they're very dulling. They're very, they, any detergent like that really dulls it down. So a, a wash and shine for wooden floors, and there's lots of different brands out there. But look, eventually when you, look, even just from where, if you never washed it, the, the floor will get dull from a million little scratches just from walking on it and dragging things on it and so on and so forth. So the easiest thing to do is to get a floor polish that you put on with a little paint roller. So when he, p- people hear paint roller, they think, I don't want to varnish the floor, you know, and I get that, even though that's not as big a job as it used to be either. But a floor polish that goes out with a paint roller is very handy. It's, it's the biggest job is moving furniture. If, if, you're, if it's a big room and there's a lot of furniture, normally what you do is pull all the furniture to one half the room, do half the floor before you leave for work in the morning. Or be, and it's only a few minutes before you leave for work in the morning. And then when you come home, it's fine to walk on or last thing before you go to bed. And then when you come down, it's fine to walk on and then do the second half. Now, you're going to give it two coats um, and you're going to go in opposite directions. So the first coat will be up, down, up, down. The second coat will be, say, so first is vertical up and down and the second one is right to left or left to right, doesn't matter which, to make sure you get an even finish. And that'll it'll take you a few minutes. It'll take longer to move the furniture, but it'll completely lift the floor without a major effort and no huge expense. A, a litre of that, it's probably 20 quid and you'll have loads in a litre. We've had a text from Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> who wants to install vents in the bedrooms of the house. The cavity walls had been pumped with insulation, so the vents are blocked. Are ceiling vents or wall vents a better option? And would you recommend vents with a fan included? You shouldn't need a vent with a fan included unless it's a major problem. Um you can just remove the vent covers and unblock, you know, cut out the insulation um, that's there. The pumped insulation is now set. And if it's not, if it's the loose bead, but that sets in time. But if it's the loose bead that it's falling down, well, then you can you can put a, a plastic tube in. So literally slide in, you know, the four inch piece of sewer pipe into it and then take out the uh, the bit of uh, the bit of insulation. But if the vents are there, just use them. But I would say wall vents are the way to go. And uh, just make sure that you have one with a, a fly screen on it. And uh, the, the, like some of the vent covers now are quite attractive. You can get, if you want, you can get brass looking ones and silver looking ones. Or you can get ones that are quite unobtrusive looking. 
um, and uh, you can get ones that open and close with a little string if you need to close it in the, the once in a blue moon that there might be a breeze blowing. Yeah. Reg asks, what will remove rust from Pebble Dash? It's coming from where a boiler had previously been located on the wall. Yeah. So we have found you, well, you can get rust remover, that, but it's really designed for re- removing rust from metal. But a constituent that's in that is also a constituent that's in most uh, lime removers. So the Lime Free or the Haggis and Blue or the HG Lime Remover, any of those, you brush it on, you leave it, well, brush it on, in this case, because it's Pebble Dash, brush it on, leave it about 20 minutes, brush it on again, leave it another 20 minutes, and then brush it on a third time, and leave it 20 minutes, and gen- then gently power wash it off. So if it was a flat surface like pavings labs or whatever, you'd brush it on and you'd cover it in cling film, and that'll keep it active, it'll keep it from drying out. But you can't put cling film on your pebble dash. It's not going to get airtight. So by redoing it three times in a row every 20 minutes, that should be enough to soften it all up and then power wash it off. Part B oh, right. of Reg's question. Okay. Is there any product that can replace a section of pebble dash from where the boiler was removed? I don't think you can buy anything in a tin I or a bucket or a bag. But... Someone out there listening hopefully will know. I imagine somebody has come across this challenge before. Yeah, they must have done. Brian Clunan is here from Clunan's Hardware in Tullamore until 11 o'clock this morning. Pick his brain at your leisure on 0818 300 103. Time now. 28 minutes to 11. Mr. Fix It with Bright Ideas Lighting, Talbot Avenue, Athlone. Suppliers of bespoke lighting for higher ceilings. Brightideas.ie Simple question. I hope a simple answer. A product to remove red algae from pebble dash. Yeah, so look, most of the algae killers will do it. Um, I was amazed the other day, a customer came in with an empty container of algae killer and it had it was a two and a half litre of a well-known brand that had cost him twenty nine ninety nine, and he wanted something, he wanted another one the same and we didn't have that brand. So when I went to look at it to, to assure him that this was very similar, it turns out that the well-known brand had a 7.5% concentration and the brand, that, the most popular one that we do, had 15%. So the, the, the five litre of the normal one, we call it, uh, was 20 euros. To buy the very same amount of product in the well-known brand would have cost 120 euros. What? It was 15%, our one was 15%, not our one, like the one we stock, Mm -hmm. the most popular one we stock, Mm -hmm. was 15%, very same product, very same, very same active ingredient. And, but it's it's, it's amazing. And always, I always say it, look at the dilution rates and uh, look, you can't go through every single variety. I accept that, but it shows the power of marketing. Absolutely. And they, like, he was telling me he was gobsmacked because he said, but there's a huge pallet of it inside the door and they have a special offer on it. And, so it was it was 100, 119, 90, yeah, yeah, yeah. 96 versus 20 euros. Anyway, so spray it on. And look, this is the weekend. If you find you have any algae or moss now, this coming weekend, you need a dry 24 hours. And in the case of moss, you want the moss to be dry enough to absorb it. So, and even if you have a haze, look, if the, the idea would be do it now. We're nearly in September. Do it now in fine weather. If, if it's not too bad and hopefully that'll keep it clear then for the winter. So algae and moss this coming weekend is the time to do it without doubt. What is the best way to remove paint from tarmac? It depends on the type of paint you see. Um, so usually most, a lot of paint removers will affect tarmac. So unfortunately it's a case of, of kind of check it and see. Um, so I would always say Put on the, the, do a little test area, put it on, drop cling film down on top of it and then leave it for a couple of hours and then power wash it off. And that literally always do it. Um, <laughs> try and do it in wet weather because even though the paint is hard, it will be slightly softer underneath. The grip underneath will be slightly softer if it has been wet. Power washing anything generally tends to be better if you do it after wet weather. Um, that's probably the only way to really successfully do it. Now, there is a thing called crud cutter, which is really a degreaser. 
and it's a gentler form and it will normally work on water-based paints and particularly if it's only splashes. You know, if you've a, if you spilled it in a paint, you have a lump of paint, well, then you need the paint remover. If you have a fine haze of splashes, you spray on the crud, crud cutter, leave it for an hour and then power wash it off and that'll normally do it. Mary in Offaly wants to know how you can prevent plaster from coming through the walls even after being freshly painted. All my walls look disgusting, she says. So plaster doesn't come through the walls. So what, what do, does she mean? Inside walls, outside walls? So a very common problem now is what's known as mapping. So, you know, if you stand, if you look at the map of the world or the map of Ireland, you have all the, you have the counties outlined. Yeah. And you get all this irregular lineage, which is because the way the country was broken up. So if you kind of get that on your walls, that's mapping. And it's most commonly caused by the way that the plaster went on. It was over troweled. So if you can imagine, you have very dense plaster in some areas and you have other areas that are not so dense. Mm. So where it was really, where the plaster was forced, I'm doing the hand actions now, I'll put my hands down. <laughs> uh, where the plaster was forced on to get a smooth finish, it's really dense and it doesn't absorb a lot of paint. And then in other areas, it's not very dense and it absorbs a lot of paint. And you end up with a very different view. You get this mapping. Is there a solution? <sighs> Probably the handiest thing in that case is just because it's not much more expensive than the paint itself. Get a, a tin of water-based primer probably get it tinted because that'll cost very little extra. So if you're painting the wall magnolia, you'll tint the primer magnolia, put on one coat of primer and then paint it again with your ordinary emulsion paint. So a bit more work involved, but yeah. at least it's solution, hopefully. Paul in Banneher has white mortar dash exterior walls which have developed red algae. But some areas also have black mould. Is there a product that will remove both? There is, but it's much more dangerous. So I would always say just use the, the algae killer because it is safer to use and cheaper to use um, or as cheap to use, but it's definitely safer to use. So do that first. It'll definitely take some of the black away. It'll definitely make it easier to remove the black afterwards. And then afterwards you can use very carefully a thing called Farmer's Friend. It's sodium hypochlorite. It's chlorine-based. Um, very straightforward to use on your path or your patio. Do not use it on tarmac in case somebody is listening um, because it's on the ground. But, you know, when you're putting something on an upright surface, are you going to spray it on? You don't want to get this stuff in your eyes. It'll destroy clothes. It'll burn your skin. So you've got to be very careful with it. So I would always say brush it on if you can because then it's not floating in the air in the way that... It is if you spray it. Or if you're going to use a sprayer, use a drenching nozzle, whereas instead of a fine mist that carries in the wind, it's a liquid coming out. And then just leave that for a couple of days and the black will be all more or less gone. Does Brian know anything about cat flaps? I want to get one fitted, but I'm worried about a draft. Yeah, you, you can get a draft if, if, if we, we have a dog flap. Uh, but we actually got two dog flaps. So dog can come into the utility room and then go from the utility room to the kitchen. And uh, if it was just the one and the back, if the back door was open, it would be blowing in the breeze. So yes, there can be. Now there is a magnet on it. Um, so it can, but it can, if it's a very strong breeze, you, you can have it. And obviously it has to be easy enough for the cat, cat to push. And of course you can get the ones with the little battery in the collar that only allows it to open when the cat is going through it. As the collar comes near, it picks up the signal from the collar and then the cat can go through. Very sophisticated. Yeah. And I know my sister in Dublin got one of those, nothing to do with a breeze. It was, she's a small dog. She had a small cat, uh, dog flap, cat flap, the same thing. Very successful. Dog comes and goes, dog comes and goes. But the, so the foxes in Dublin are so cute that the fox sticks in the head and if there's any food in the dog bowl... No way. Yeah, yeah. If there's any food in the dog bowl, the, dog, the, cat, the fox comes in and eats the uh, food out of the, the dog bowl. So she had to get one for the dog, not for a breeze, but just to keep the fox away. How brazen. Yeah, they're so brazen. Coming up after 11, another Midlands 103 summer special, and this time a lady who has been involved in the National Ploughing Association for more than 70 years. 
Just imagine that. That is the force of nature. That is... Anna Mae McHugh, yeah. as well as Anna Marie McHugh, who is absolutely taking up the mantle behind her. Mm-hmm. So we're only three weeks, less than three weeks now from the 2024 National Ploughing Championship. So a lot to cover. But still time for DIY after these. Mr. Fixes with Bright Ideas Lighting Talbot Avenue at Lone. Your garden and patio lighting specialist. Get the right advice before you start. Bright Ideas Talbot Avenue at Lone. Brian Clunan is here from Clunan's Hardware in DIY. <laughs> I tried try to speak again. English. Yes, yes, try try again. Again. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Strong a, a very, a very Strong loud coffee. slurp from his coffee. Brian Clunan is here from Clunan's Hardware in Tullamore to talk DIY. Hilda suggests, I wouldn't say the foxes in Dublin are brazen. We are witnessing self-domestication here. Yeah. Yeah, Nikki, my sister, lives in city centre, or in a, not in a city, sorry, she lives in central Dublin and, um, well, south side, but she said she regularly comes home to find a fox on the doorstep, curled up on the doorstep, and she'd be halfway up the steps before the fox will kind of deign to move. There's no question of, you know, running from the human. They just, they don't care. I love how he moved from inner city to yeah, south sorry, side. Did well, you notice just thinking, that? She won't be listening, but uh, she mightn't like to be described as uh, inner city. Why not? She lives in the city. Why not? For, because she has a very expensive house in the south side of Dublin. Any recommend- They're all expensive in the south side of Dublin. Any recommendations to remove lichen from an old roof? Yeah, very same. So the, the algae remover that we spoke about earlier, that moss remover, it's all the same. They, that will do lichen. Now again, you have to put it on on a fine day. Again, you don't want you don't want rain at all for the next twenty four hours. And again, lichen is 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 harder to remove. So it's you need to leave it time to work, and then you're going to have to power wash it off with a degree of pressure. But like you don't want to. They say you should never really power wash a roof. You should never really power wash concrete. To be like poured concrete, stones, natural stone. That's fine. But poured concrete again, once you power wash it, you're abrading the surface. It's going to get algae much quicker when you abrade the surface. So it's like taking sandpaper to it. And because you've taken the sandpaper to it now, it's coarser and it's more likely to develop algae quicker. So you avoid power washing a roof if you can. But in this particular case, you probably will need that degree of pressure to take off the dead algae. Catherine asks, when a washing machine is filling with water, and you hear a gurgling sound from the drawer area, what's likely going on? It's just the water coming in. It's coming into the drawer. So, like, if you put in the powder or the liquid into the drawer, water has to come into the drawer to pick up the powder. So that's it, and it's it's breaking down the powder. It's, it's you know, making the powder dissolve. So it has to come in under pressure to, to dissolve all that powder and take it back down in on the clothes. That's all, really. Now, look, it's always a good idea to, to um, there's a thing called washing machine engineer or there's a whole lot of different brands. Is it like a descaler? It's a descaler mm-hmm. and a disinfectant and it, it, it does help break down a buildup of powder anywhere. They're mostly citric acid based. So even a, a, a bag of citric acid and just put through an empty wash at the hottest poss- possible temperature once in a blue moon is always a good thing to do. If there's a build- bit of a build-up in the filter, that's often enough to break it down. If there's a bit of a build-up all around the machine, it's enough to break it down and clear it away. Catherine also asks, because she has mould on the bedroom ceiling, but only over the window area, is there a way to get rid of it for good? She attacks it, treats it, but rinse and repeat. Yeah, look, it is... <sighs> There's no easy way to do it because there's a, there's a cold patch there. But the thing to do is, if you treat it before it's a problem, it's a it's a one it's a two minute job. So what you're doing is you treat the mold. So you put on a fungicide solution, you kill it. So the one the particular one we would sell, you mix it five to one. You put it on. You wait for the 24 hours and then you wash it off. But the problem is, if the mold is very bad. It takes. It often won't wash off, and now you have to paint. You have to give a light sanding, or you maybe even use a stain block and then paint. But the real secret is, say in that particular one that we talk about, you mix it five to one. I always say after you've painted everything or cleaned everything, mix it two or three to one, and apply it again, and don't wash it off. And if you do that, 
every September. If you put on the mole killer every September, that should be enough to keep it clear. You won't even, it's a clear liquid, you brush it on or sponge it on and that should be enough. Now, if it's really, if it's bad, you might do it twice a year. You might do it in September, you might do it again at the end of December. And, but it's a two minute job. It's, it's the biggest thing would be to get the step ladder to climb up and do the job. But if you do it before the mold forms, it's no work. The big work is when the mold forms. Mike, uh, he is looking for a recommendation on his electric shower, which keeps getting clogged up with lime. He has it about three years. He's wondering, should he just replace it? Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Um, so descale it. It's get the lime-free descaler, follow the instructions, pour it in, leave it for a couple of hours, and then run it through. It is a mild asset, so be careful with it. But loads of people do it very, very successfully. I suppose long term, he obviously needs to look at getting a water softer. Um, and that will, because don't forget, okay, the, the shower is the the, the element that will get clogged up most quickly in your house because it's a, it's a huge volume of water and it's a high, it's like, it's like your kettle, except the element in the shower is much stronger. It's mm. a lot more powerful and it has a lot more water going over it. So it gets clogged up very quickly. So if you see what happens in your kettle, um, you can see what's happening in the shower, except it's going to happen much quicker. It's also happening in your dishwasher. It's also happening in your wash machine. It's happening if you have an electric immersion. Does it only happen in the appliances or would the piping around the house itself become clogged? Oh, 100%. Time? 100%. It's a regular problem where people find a buildup of lime in everything from the central heating system to to the hot water taps. I mean, yeah, 100%. Is there a descaler you can flush through? Yeah, the yeah, you can system? put that. Yeah, yeah, you can put the lime free descaler. You put it in the uh, the tank, the hot water cylinder, and then you run each tap until you get hot tap, and because it's, it's the hot, it's the hot that causes the problem. Mm. You run each hot tap until you get a little hint of the pink, the purpley pink in the water. Turn it off. Leave it a couple of hours. You go around the whole house, turning on hot taps, using holding a jug under it until you see the little bit of pink, and then stop and then go on to the next one, the next one, the next one. And then after a few hours, you come along and you turn on each tap and a hot tap to drain it out. And you'll, like, you'll see the difference. If you have a problem, you'll see the difference in the power of the water practically straight away. Yeah. How often should you do well, that? And, and just to say, I mean, fit a water softener and you won't have the problem. Mm, mm. So like prevention is always better than cure. Yeah, but if you're living in a hard water area and you install the water softener tomorrow, you're still going to have you to still remove do, yeah, what's there. Exactly. So you do that once and that should be the end of it. Yeah. All right. Next query. Is there a vermin deterrent that emits an ultra high frequency and works on rats? Yeah, within reason, yeah. So the ultrasonic pest repellers work in two ways. Most of them are electromagnetic and ultrasonic. Um, they work through the wiring and they work in ultrasonic sound. But ultrasonic sound waves travel like light waves. So the real problem there is if the rat is in a hole, it's like, if you can imagine, it's like shining a big torch, shining a beam of light, very powerful light, and I don't like the light. But if I'm in a hole in the ground, I, I can't see the light. Sound wa- ultrasonic sound waves are like light waves. So that's where the electric magnetic works. It works through the wiring of the house as well. And it, there's very good feedback on it. Mm. But Are there, by the way, degrees of the severity? So yeah, if so you, you believe get, you have a rat, do you need a stronger you, one? You get the more powerful one, which covers 4,000 square foot of a house, mm. which is a big, big house. But having said that, it won't really work in a shed. You have very little wiring. It won't work. If you have look, if you have ease of access, it won't work. If they can come and go at will... It's not going to work. They don't like nesting in an area of one of these plugged in. So you'd be saying traps are poison. Do the preventative. Put down the bait boxes outside. If it's in a shed, put down the bait boxes inside. Put down the bait or put down traps. Will we have a fox coming to us for years? We feed her every night. Lovely. But she is very nervous, says Sally. Final one for you. Brian, you know the hole at the bottom of the shower where the hose connects. How do I stop water trickling from there? So the big question is, is it just a worn, is the washer missing a worn? Or is it a problem with the, with the, the shower itself is, has, a, has a seal inside gone? So the first thing is just take off the shower hose and see, is the rubber a bit perish looking? Just replace the rubber anyway, mm. or even put in two rubbers 
two little rubber washers and see what happens. Brian, thanks as ever. Thanks, Will. You can find him at Clunan's Hardware in Tullamore or indeed next Wednesday, 20 past 10, he'll be back right here.